Hey guys, Andrew McComb here and welcome to Outlier. In this week's episode we're in Murchison, New Zealand, a true Outlier destination. And I'm going to be interviewing Rob Hunt. He's the owner of Murchison Heli Tours. Rob Hunt, welcome to Outlier. G'day. <laughs> Mate, we're in the middle of nowhere. Awesome, eh? How good is it? Where <laughs> are we? Real good. We're actually up the, uh, up the Glenroy Roy River, which is uh, we way out of Murchison. We're about 15 miles to the south. And um, pretty lucky to have a, a, this for us to play around in. Nice uh, boys toy there in the background. It goes all right. <laughs> so how'd you end up in Murchison? Yeah, a bit of a, a long story. My um, my in-laws bought a property here and uh, quite a few years ago, and, and we came up here camping, and and we decided that uh, I'd flown over the place a few times, and um, and thought, well, there's there's no one else here, and there's all this beautiful landscape around it, and and no one really gets to see it, so it's a good place to to set up a, a base. So you came up primarily for from a heli perspective, there was no one in town who, who had an operation, it was... Yeah, and so no one in town, so you know, you didn't have any comp direct competition yeah. right here, so it was, it was we just thought it was a, a good opportunity to to live here, and the place is a beautiful place, and a good place to bring up the kids and whatnot, so yeah, yeah. it was uh, a bit of a no-brainer for us. And where were you from originally? Originally, I was, uh, I was brought up in Hawke's Bay, so the Good Island, the North Island, up through there, but I've spent over half my life in the South Island and uh, Nelson and Canterbury and stuff. And, and what brings a Hawke's Bay in to the South Island with a passion or a, a, an interest, I guess, for choppers? Did, was that, did that start in the North Island? or uh, it, it was around since I was a, a young fella, actually, and probably in, in the North Island. I had an uncle who had a helicopter licence up there and I flew around with him. And um, Originally, I came to the South Island for a bit of study. Uh, a, a teaching degree of all things, and um, Where, the place. did you go to Otago or Canterbury? I was or? in Canterbury down there for yep. a few years, and, and went overseas after that. We well, actually back up to the North Island, then overseas, and came back, and uh, was probably got a bit tired of uh, being a bit of a hypocrite and telling kids to follow their dreams. And here I was teaching them, and um, and so I thought I better better go and follow my own dreams, really. How does that process work when you're telling everyone else? What 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 process did you use on yourself, or was it just because you told so many kids it started to wear yeah, off on uh, you? Yeah, it started to sort of sink in, and, and um, you now you have a few things in your life, and you look, you talk to a few older people, and you think, and, and they're always saying, "I wish I had done that," and I and I wish I had tried this, and, and it's too late for them. And I thought, well, now's the time to grab the bull by the horns and, and give it a crack. So once you made the call from being teacher, teaching others to follow their dreams, you decided it yeah. will be a pilot? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And and dropped everything and that was it. And where'd you do that, down in Canterbury? No, I did that up in Nelson, actually. So yeah. I learned to fly up there and, and uh, I went in there and they said, well, what do you want to do after you get your licence? And I said to them, I'm going to work for you guys. And that's exactly what I did. So I used my, my teaching background to, to get an instructor rating and, and get a job with them. So it was a, a pretty lucky start, I guess, really. It's interesting because you, as far as your company goes, um, you do tours. Yes. You do lifting. Yes. Your commercial work. Yep. And you also do training. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you've kind of combined the, the teaching side as well as the, the passion side. Yeah, so it's really good. And it's, uh, I think the best thing is you, you get up and you don't feel like you're going to work. So is that the reason you did it? Like, is the, if you were to explain to the outliers out there or potential outliers, young entrepreneurs who are trying to get into anything, is that the key that you're trying to identify something that doesn't feel like work or is it more passion related or what was yeah, the process? I, I, I think definitely if, if you've got something that's a passion and there's an opportunity to follow that passion, it'll make your life, I guess for me anyway, personally, a lot more enjoyable. And um, and if you can, if you can do that, it's, it's a lot easier to to drive forward with it as well. Mm. And just when you were teaching, what were you teaching? Primary school. Is that right? Yeah, so, so that, was, that was really cool and I really enjoyed that. And there's times I, you know, I'd go and help out with um, kids coaching and stuff and you, you do miss it, but then there's other parts you don't miss. And um, yeah, kids are, kids are really cool. They just, 
just sponges and they soak it all up and and it, and it is I enjoy teaching people things and, and that's why I still teach people to fly because it's quite good sort of giving back mm. and so from a business perspective you made the move to Murchison yes you how does that process work then you've come to Murchison had you done a recce beforehand yeah definitely there was a there was a fair bit of thinking going into it because it's a huge investment and um, for me I was in a, a pretty good situation where I had you know people that believed in me and um, and so they've, they've backed me into into this and um, you know put a lot of trust in me as well mm. but I think uh, that comes back to your work ethic prior to that and people see that you know you don't need to go around telling people how good you are if you just put in the work people will notice it and they're prepared to, to give you a go and so that, that was you know without people backing me it, it wouldn't have um, wouldn't have happened again a really interesting lesson for the outliers out there is how do you build that trust so others are willing to invest in your dream I think it's 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 just go about life in your normal way, but actually, you know, showing people that you are prepared to work for things, and um, y- your history will, will be something that that people will back. Mm. You know, so actions speak louder than words. Definitely, yeah. yeah, definitely. And then, so you got to Murchison. Did you? What was the story like? Did you have to scope out the the local environment for for attractions, or was yeah. it more? So, so myself, because there's myself and and um, my wife Ange and and my other business partner, Graham, and we came up here on a few tri- trips and had a bit of a look around and visited a few people. And, you know, we talked to a few people prior to making the final call. We kind of, we had it in our, the back of our minds um, to that we were going to make it work somehow. And um, the more we looked into it, the more we, we became really interested in, in knowing that it would actually work. We've never really, I can honestly say, I've never doubted that it, that it, um, that it wouldn't work. Mm. You know? So it's, it's having a bit of confidence in what you're doing too. Where does that come from? Not sure. I'm actually not too sure, <laughs> to be honest. I think it's, um, I'm a firm believer if you work for something, you'll get there. And so if you, if you work hard just and, and have that focus at the end of the day, I think, yeah, you'll achieve most things in life. And yeah. there'll, be, there'll be a few uphill battles you've got to face, but if you you know that the, you can get to the top of the hill, you'll be fine. Yeah. And market-wise, it's not a big town, is it? So for no. the viewers' sake, it's like, what, 600 residents? Yeah, about that, yeah. yeah. So it is um, it is a small town, but probably, I guess, the, the big thing for us is we weren't really focusing on the, the town itself. You know, they're really great, great supportive town. Um, we try and get behind them as much as we can and, and community things, but um, sort of going through that, that the, the passes by and that's why we've built our, our hangar right on the main road so you get a lot of people seeing it as they go past and and that's been great advertising for us but um, it, it's what's around us that sort of makes the um, the location attractive for us we've got two national parks um, one on either side of us we've we've got all this remote country it's good helicopter country so isn't it yeah as you've seen yeah <laughs> not so flash today but you know that's good so your main customers wouldn't be the locals; they'd be people from external, or is it more the farmers, or is it? We we'll do a bit of um, a bit of work for Department of Conservation and um, you know, various people doing surveys, and uh, we've done the odd beacon call out when someone sets off a, a beacon. We've gone out to those. Um, so it's, that's it's, it's search and rescue. Search and rescue. So it's extremely varied what we do: lifting stuff, a lot of concrete, cell phone towers, and things like that. So it's yeah, it is extremely varied. So I, I'm fascinated by that because we are seriously in an outlier location, not just where we are right now, but yeah. Murchison itself is an hour and a half from a major centre, which isn't that major in the scheme of things. Yeah. Um, you don't have a lot to draw on, but the internal outlier within you just knew I can make this work. Yeah. And how, like how many years ago was that? It was probably about four years ago I started to, to think of an idea. Um, I... It really came from wanting to stay with my family because the the other option that we played around with my wife and I was me going overseas and working sort of month mm. on month off but then for me I um, and my wife actually she said it was, it's probably not going to work for us and, and that was really good that she said that before it actually mm. happened mm. because the, and that was the the big turning point for us it was uh, making a decision where we could stay as a family together and, and grow up with the kids and not miss out on basically half their lives if you're going away yeah. month on month off so yeah it's um we needed to 
to stay together and, and make a plan that we could live our, our lifestyle. Yeah. So it's quite a defining moment, that, isn't it? Just yeah. that statement. I don't think it can work if that's what you want to do. It's not going to work the overall values yeah. of the family. Yeah. So it's made it mean that you have to make it work. Yeah. Yeah, well, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, and we are we are making it work, which is was satisfying now. But, yeah, it's, um, what was it? There's, the, you'll, you'll get a few challenges along the way, but you just got to, you know, pick your lip up and carry on. So tell us about some of those. Yeah, you know, I guess the, the big thing was the initial sort of setup. Really, it's you know it's 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 not a, a cheap operation to to set up, and and um, you know my background, I don't come from wealth or anything like that. Um, yeah, I grew up with a, with mum on the old uh, social welfare scheme and and whatnot, and so it's yeah uh, that was the big challenge is where is this going to come from? But it was, I put together a bit of a business plan and um, just a written business plan and and uh, went, and, went and approached my father-in-law actually and, and said you know will you what do you think about this and, and he came back within half an hour and said we'll we'll try and do something fantastic and he and the whole thing and, and I remember him saying to me is it it's I'm backing you because you know what we've seen in the past yeah. you know so it was it's yeah, a, a really big compliment, I, I thought, and um, it meant a lot to me to have someone to say, yeah, I'll, I'll invest in you. Yeah. And so, um, did he have any knowledge around choppers, or? <laughs> Not really, no. Well, he did. Yeah, no, that's, no, he's, he had a, um, a private licence at one, one stage there, but as far as the commercial side of, of the operation, no, not a lot, and, and that's where he's put a, a huge amount of faith in what we've we're doing here so does he have a knowledge in business or in yeah yeah he does yeah yeah so he, he's um he's involved in tourism yeah um on on the board of a fairly major company in new zealand and, and mm -hmm. that's um you know so that, that was and that was initially our main focus was the tourism side of it yeah but i guess yeah, for anyone that is starting something don't get completely set on on one direction you know be able to change and that's what we've done is we've evolved and we we keep looking for things to, to do, you know, like how can we change, how can we make things better and, and what hasn't worked, you know, can we drop that and, and, and try something else. Yeah. Do you look at your local environment, potential local market for ideas in that relation, definitely, like relation to that? Definitely. Well, we talk to the locals here and, and, um, and they've asked us to, would we be interested in doing these various types of jobs and, mm. and if we could focus on that, that would help the, the local locals around here, which has been, it's been quite good. And that's sort of um, new directions that we'll, we'll try and take off of. Yeah. And what are some of the main things that you do do? I know we mentioned the sort of the categories, but just explain some of the, a bit more depth in each of those areas. Yeah, so um, a lot of the, um, I guess it's just so varied. We're, like. One day we'll be carting passengers around to to look at things in the hills, or, or we might be lifting and building equipment for huts and remote huts in the back country. Um, or in the summer we might get called to a fire, so we might have to go and put out fires and and whatnot. And um, yeah, it's extremely varied. Yeah, and, and we meet a lot of really really good people while we're doing it, so it's always interesting. Absolutely. Like, is there a lot of is it foreign tourism? Is it local tourism that that's the main? Other than the, the commercial, the commercial work. stuff, probably yeah, well at the moment it's um, it's definitely local tourism. Yeah. So um, a lot of Kiwis who are actually exploring their backyard and having a look around and, and seeing what's there. And the good thing about where we are is that it is a place that's relatively unknown. So it's really easy to to impress people when you do take them flying because they just go, "Wow, we didn't know this was here." Uh, well, I've been. <laughs> I used to come up here every Christmas or through here. They call it, what do they call it? A, a pie, pie and a pea. A pie and a pea stop, <laughs> really, yeah, isn't yeah. it? On the way to somewhere yeah. else, a criteria in my, my situation. But um, just being here for the last few days, you know, I'm, and you showing us around, it's what, I guess, per, what's the perception as you go through a, a one-lane uh, town, yeah. one main road, and it looks like, I know there's some nice rivers and that around, but until you get above it and you can see the whole scheme of things, the, the scenery around here is world class. Oh isn't yeah, it? it's fantastic, and and it's so raw and untouched, and and there's a lot away from the main roads. Like and there's and you've you've if you stopped and looked at Murchison itself, you, you look at all the actual the the tourism outfits and you know rafting, kayaking, um, the jet boating, the tramping, and the hunting and the fishing, and it's the list goes on and on, and it's it's just so so remote and and but it's actually quite close too. Absolutely, especially when you got the, the yeah, big yeah, bird well, behind it. Yeah, 
you know, she makes getting places pretty easy. Absolutely. So uh, one thing that keeps coming to me is uh, it's really interesting. There was never a, an operation in town, uh, never a heli operation. No, I believe there has been a few people in the past that have actually tried a few things. Um, and I, I guess the timing probably wasn't wasn't right for a few of them. Um, or the scale of which they've done. We kind of went at it and went, right, we're going to put everything into it. And, and do it and properly. Do it properly. And so we had to build a hangar and make it look pretty and a bit of, fair bit of earthworks and we're moving around dirt. So, you know, it's, uh, it's the old story, buy once, cry once, you know. <laughs> well, it's also, if you build it, they will come. So yeah. if there was nothing here prior. You're the only one in town now, but you've because you're the outlier in town, e.g. the only one, Yeah. Um, people are coming to you now, aren't they? Yeah, they they yeah, know we need to help with a rescue or a fire or yeah. you know some hunting or whatever. Who's going to help us? Yeah, it's funny because normally they talk about never build a business without the market. Yeah, but you're almost created a market, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, and that and that's the you know yeah you build it and they'll come hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully keep coming more yeah, and more. Yeah, more and more. And we've found over the years that we've we've been here, we're into our fourth year of business now. And in the first year, I was saying to you this morning that, um, you know, the big machine, the one sitting behind us here, it didn't really do a lot in the first year. Did lots of small jobs, mm. but we, I knew I had a bit of a, a market for the training side of it when I was teaching people to fly, and that, that wee machine that we have got, um, that that created a lot of business itself. And, and especially in the commercial side and people not knowing you when you come to a new town, like, who's this? Who's this guy? <laughs> What's he done before? And so it takes a few years to, to build up that client base and, and also uh, create a bit of trust as well because, you know, you are, in this game here, you, you know, you, you're putting people's lives in your hands. So, yeah. You know, it, just building that good re reputation. So. so you are new to town as well. So how do you build trust when you get to a new environment? Well, for us, I think, and I've, I've said this to a few people, having it, it was a real plus for us having young kids in the town because automatically we were involved in the school when our kids play sport. And I like my sport and, and rugby club and, and bits and pieces like that. So getting involved in the community, you know, and, um, you know, putting your hand up, you know, hand up, not hand out yeah. is a big thing. Yeah. And people see that. Just want to say that again for the viewers. Hand up, not hand yeah, out. It's very important, it isn't is, it? It is. And I, I'm a, a firm believer in it. And I think it's um, a, a really important thing if you want people to have a bit of faith in you as well. You know, there's nothing worse than someone who's just going around with a handout all the time and not prepared to do anything for it, in mm. my opinion. Mm. You know? Well, it's about value, isn't it? If yeah. you can show value and provide value first, yeah. law of reciprocation, people feel compelled to give value back, don't yeah, they, in yeah, some way? Yeah, definitely. And, and I'm not expecting anything back either. It's just it's just kind of what we do. We don't want to be those people that, you know, take, take, take. Mm. And so it's, uh, and it, and it's satisfying when you, can act, when you are in a position to be able to support local uh, events or community you know community um, initiatives as well yeah so I hear you sponsor the local one of the holes at the local golf club yeah definitely yeah <laughs> that's good it's, it's quite good because the golf that that hole looks up to our uh, our hangar and uh, and I muck around on, on the old golf course <laughs> not any good at it and Friday nights Friday, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's good <laughs> it is good yeah so good fun and that's another way you know you are socializing and getting getting out there and i think in a small community it's a lot easier to do as well because um you know you're in a, in a small pool and everyone talks and yeah it's it, it's good yeah I, don't be a dick <laughs> well it's a kiwi kiwi saying that isn't yeah. it don't be a wanker because yeah. we don't like wankers yeah yeah exactly yeah. And, and um don't think you're better than what you are mm. you know and that helps connect a lot faster, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and just being a bit humble about things, go about your daily job and do a good job of it. And yeah. people will uh, support you and, you know, they'll talk to someone else and then the next job will come in. So oh, what I love is you've got an incredible playground. You've got a, incredible options, both commercially, uh, tourist-wise. Do you ever get out and about yourself up for a hunt or a fish or a... Yeah, I... I, I I'd like to go and uh, go fishing, but I'd probably be no good. I've got a really good friend who's a fishing guide, and he keeps telling me he's going to take me, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Doug, are you listening? <laughs> yeah. So um, no, I need to get out and do that. But yeah, really lucky with the, a lot of the local farmers as well. You know, we've have I've gone out hunting on a, on a few of their properties, and, and what, which is a great safe hunting environment. You know, you're the only one around, and it, it's great to just get out there and do things. So. Do you do a lot with, um, I don't know what you call it, with 
culling and like hunting to, to help uh, actually support the environment? Yeah, so we do a bit of pest control for the Department of Conservation and local farmers if they've got a, a bit of a problem there. So, um, yeah, we, we do a little bit of that as well, just another string to the bow, I guess. What about the rivers and the mountains? Which is your favourite? Or oh, the mountains, definitely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What's your favourite peak? Uh, around here, I, I love the Nadu Range, which is actually sitting out that way under a bit of cloud there and it's um, it's pretty untouched and pretty remote and it's just amazing that you've got this landscape that's just sort of erupted out of out of nowhere once upon a time so it's it, it's pretty spectacular and and hopefully this cloud clears off a little bit more and we'll show you on the way back out yeah what about that I've seen there's a cliff or I've heard it's a bit of a local secret there's a cliff with a, a water spout that comes out only a couple of times a year what is that yeah so that's a, a really original name the hole in the wall waterfall <laughs> And um, yeah, that, that's only about a, a five-minute flight from Murchison, and it's um, and and the great thing about that is it only happens after a huge amount of rain, so and it only lasts a few days too. And it's just a, a straight big, a big cliff with a big hole in it, and, the, and it looks like someone's opened the floodgates out, up on a uh, on a hydro scheme when it's really gone. So it's it's pretty spectacular. It's amazing, right? yeah. I've seen some footage in the in the local cafe, but. Um, Big thing for me is you talk to the young kids. That on primary, that's a very young age to be telling them to follow their dreams. If I had a primary teacher like that, I'd been stoked because it's not very common, yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, definitely. And and my wife and I, we have conversations about our own kids and just you know whatever the kids want to do, if they're passionate about it, it, it just makes life so much easier if they can actually do that. And I and I guess I imagine I'll I'll be satisfied with what I've I've tried to achieve, you know, when I'm when I'm older. Mm. You know? Well, even when not when you're old, like to, like we flew out here today for this interview. How do you feel? Do you feel like we're not really working? Are no, we? we're just having a yarn. <laughs> having a yarn with campfires just here. Yeah, yeah. A couple of beers. <laughs> yeah, been not having the beers for the flight home. Yeah, right? well, it's cup no, of tea for cup me. Cup of tea that was. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, for effect, the beers sound better. Yeah, <laughs> but what a way to live, right? It's, yeah. it's and that's what we try to instill with Outlier is it's not about doing what you think you have to or everyone else is doing, it's doing what you want to do and, yeah. and, and that's the greatest way for fulfilment, would you say? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and, and don't be afraid to take advice from people, you know. If, if people were around you saying, go and do it, it's probably because they've got a bit of belief in you. So give it a crack, I think, yeah. What would you say to someone who wants to do what they want to do but doesn't have any support and doesn't have someone believing in them? It's still not impossible, is it? No, it's not. And, you know, it's a gamble. And um, the best thing about that gamble is you are gambling on yourself. You know, so you're, you've got a lot of... Uh, I guess you're going to be putting a lot of faith in you and you can make the decisions that are going to change the way that things happen too. So it's not like you're gambling on something else where you've got no control over it, you know. Well, it's a, it's a controlled gamble, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It is. And, and um, back yourself. That, that's it. That's, that's what I've done is I've just gone, oh, I'm going to believe in myself and I'm going to take a punt here, but I, I know that I'm the determining factor in the whole lot, really. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not a case of just throwing it all out, baby, out with the bathwater, taking massive risks. It's a, it's a controlled, and it's a yeah, you're definitely. assessing the risk. Obviously, it's like when you go up for a flight, you don't just chuck it up, but you have got to look at your weather, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. or your conditions. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You're going to go out and you're going to make decisions on about what you can do and, and what you can see as feasible. But uh, yeah, you definitely want to think it through. Mm. With using the chopper analogy, is like how important is being adaptable and modifying as you go? Oh, you just you've got to do it. You know, you, if, I think if you've got your heart set on planning a route and staying with that route the whole way along, if, you know, for me, I, I know that it, it would have failed for us if we'd gone the way that we originally set out. Um, what was the original plan? It, just straight tourism. Yeah, it, it was just straight tourism with a little bit of commercial work and and whatnot. But it's actually it's more commercial work and and less of the tourism, to be honest, and um, which is which is great. And um, yeah, I think it's yeah, you just got to be adaptable. Yeah. And what's the favourite for you? What you prefer the commercial work? You prefer the hunting? What? I just like the variety. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's it. My yeah. wife will be the first person to tell you that I can't sit still and I get a bit bored doing the same thing. So it's it's having that variety for me, and that that, that suits my, my personality. Do you think that's an entrepreneur or an outlier trait that we don't? like to do the same thing over and over? I think so. I think so. It's, it's people stepping out of their comfort zone and actually, actually I'd like to try this today. And I'd, and I'd like to try that and, and, and evolving as they go. 
too. That, that's, I think that's the big thing is, is being able to evolve because the world changes. And so you've got to change with the world. Yeah. So it's not about stuck in the rut. It's, all, it's about a clean slate every morning or every week or every year or whatever yeah. I'm trying to... Yeah, definitely. And I think if you do feel like, and I have felt that uh, occasionally you are stuck in a rut, you've got to go outside and pinch yourself a little bit. <laughs> you know, and, and say, well, actually, look at the day before and the week before that and, and what's coming up, you know, and, it, and it's it's easy to get, you think you're stuck in a rut, but you're not. You know? So how, just explain that process a bit more. You'll go outside and punch yourself in the head. No, no, punch myself. Oh, oh that's the Kiwi accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you'll pinch yourself and just what you're saying, actually appreciate what's around you. Appreciate what's around you, what you've got, where you've come from. And what you've got to look forward to, I think that's it's a big thing, and, and take a big, dig, big, deep breath and smile, you know. And especially if you look at where you were, let's say two years ago or three years ago, and, and go, well, actually, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with with what I've done, you know, because I think when you do put a bit of pressure on yourself and you want to, which you are, you feel like you're you've achieved, you know, the, the personality trait is you just want to push harder and harder and, and go for more, but it's okay to sit back and go, I'm quite happy with where I'm sitting. And, and I yeah, I do have to tell myself that sometimes and, and just take a break too. Well, that's important, isn't it? I guess what I'm hearing primarily though is patience. It's not a race. It's, it's not a race. Because I, I know how it feels for outliers, right? And I get it myself, is that's that internal drive yeah. to always want to be doing more or yeah. or further or higher or whatever. Um, but for what purpose? Do you know what I mean? Like, At the end of the day, you're going to be fertiliser. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> So it's, uh, you know, live your life while you can and enjoy what you've got. And, and, and I guess sometimes uh, when you are trying to create your own business, you've just got to be, you've got to back off a little bit too and, and take time for the people that are around you. And I, I'm pretty guilty of that too, as, as you, you get so focused on what you're trying to, trying to achieve is that um, you, you forget about the, the things in life that you probably should be doing. And so you've, you've got to really, and I get, I get told that by my wife, actually. Mm. She's just like, come on, back off. And It's great it, to have a good wife, isn't it? It does, actually. It keeps you present, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. And, 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 and that's, um, it keeps you pretty grounded, too. And, and so you've got a really easy to focus on the on your business goals and everything like that and, and work and and whatnot because that's the thing that's creating your, your income or, or your lifestyle or whatnot. But, yeah, there's, there's, there's quite a few more important things at, at the end of the day, too. So how would that look for you? So we call it work-life balance or we call yeah. it core values. What, what are your core values and then how do you implement them in your day-to-day life? Well, my, definitely family first. You know, that's without your family, you know, really, for me personally, what have, what have, what have you got? Mm. You know, we're on this, well, I think we're around to make the next generation better, hopefully. Mm. And so if you can give them, the, you know, your, your time and your love and all that sort of stuff, then hopefully they'll do it for, the, for my grandkids as well. So... Um, having a job that is fairly can be quite flexible um, is, is pretty good for our family, but at other times, you know, it's it can be quite challenging to balance. But it's just it's the nature of what we're doing here too. Yeah, you know, it's right when the job's on, we've got to go. Yeah. So. so again, it's another outlier trait that we tend to. I guess we build our businesses around our passion, which means they tend to be more flexible. We're not about nine to five, are yeah. we? No, no, definitely not. No, no, we. And, and you know, like there's been there's days where the kids are playing sport, and I can just go, right, we've got not, not a lot on today, so mm. off we go and we go and play that sport. And other times, or watch the sport. Um, other times, the uh, the kids have got sport, and I can't go. So it's, it, yeah. there's a bit of you know, win some, lose some. Really. Well, it's a, again, it's a balancing act, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they call it work-life balance, but um, at the end of the day, it's about putting your priorities in first, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is definitely. So it's uh, yeah. Sometimes people don't like it. And sometimes people do like it. It's just the way it goes. Yeah. And how do you address that from a communication perspective with the family? Is it just a given that that's how it works, or yeah, you try to as much warning as possible. Um, like we just run digital calendars, and if I have a job coming, I try and put it in as quickly as I can. And, and um, that just lets you, you know, my wife's got the calendar as well because she works for us and, and she can see what's coming up and we, we can plan things or we can block days out as well and say, well, we're not, we're not working those days. And just and the good thing about us too is because we're the only people in town, then generally people will accept that 
we can um, we're shut on those days and we can we can do the flight another day yeah so so if you look at your journey so far it's a four-year journey commercially it's obviously started when you're a lot younger what what are the key lessons that you've learned about yourself and that you can help say the other potential outliers and entrepreneurs out there that maybe just fast track their journey or, or allow their journey to be a little bit easier um start planning straight away have a have a clear goal where you want to be when you start out I know I, when I first started flying I said to people they said oh what do you want to do and I said we want to have a couple helicopters and a hangar and I, I kind of said it jokingly but I, I guess in the back of my mind that's what I wanted to do and at that stage there I had no plan of how I was going to do it <laughs> and it just it's amazing sort of, how it unfolds isn't yeah, it yeah and it just worked out but um back yourself you know put the work in um don't think that things are just going to happen overnight too you know it'll take years well can maybe it'll take years maybe it will happen overnight if you're really lucky but you know you um you definitely definitely just back yourself and believe in yourself that's that's the the biggest thing and and surround yourself in good people and um and think about what people say to you you know so so listen 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 to good advice you know, but determining what good advice is is, is a challenge. And, and sometimes talking about the advice you've been given with people you trust is a really good thing to, to do as well. You know, like um, I've got some really good friends in, in the same in, in, industry that I, I really do trust. And I'm on the phone with them every week, you know, and they, they don't even live near me or anything like that. But I trust their opinions and, and whatnot. And, you know, and that's really good to bounce ideas off people too. They're in a similar role. Yeah, where did you find those people? Is that throughout just, your just, journey? Yeah, throughout the journey, meeting them along the, along the way and and just relationships happening, you know, evolving. You know, it's not like, oh, you do this, I'm going to be your friend straight away. It's just people you probably don't expect to be really good friends turn out to be some of the best friends you got. So, mm. and, and that's that's really important. And uh, I was told when I, when we started this emergency and that it, it'll be really lonely here for me in this industry but it hasn't been mm. it's been really really good it's been phone call and, and you know technology has been has been fantastic but you pick up the phone if you've got a question especially more experienced people you know, i've got some really really good friends who've done a lot more than what i've done and they're more than happy to to give advice and help you out when you need it and that's 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 a really good point for the for the young outliers is there's always often an intimidation factor or a or why would they want to talk to me factor. But yeah. the, the more I've dealt with outliers, successful outliers, the more I realise they're the ones who are actually more inclined to want to help. They yeah. want to give back. Yeah, definitely. And I think the, the, the big thing I've found is it's when you're, when you're talking to someone, you're not just ringing them for a I want, I want, I want. You know, you're actually ringing them for a conversation and those relationships will evolve. And there's, there's, I always find there's nothing worse than when they when they ring you. It's a they they're always asking for something. Yeah. You know, and, and I think yeah the the good relationships I've got have guys that I trust that it's we're friends. You know, and that's 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 really good. And it's not just a it's a it's a phone call about hey what's going on today and and all that sort of side of it. And then things will happen from that. Yeah. Well, again, you reverse engineer that process. If you give value and they, you're after their value, like, yeah. and not in a bad way, it's more a learning way. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's a win-win and a reciprocation on an ongoing basis. Yeah. That's a pretty good foundation for a good relationship, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Rather than, like you said, take, 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 because they don't last long. No, no. And you'll get, you know, it's, it's about your own personal reputation. People talk, so, you know, it be <laughs> I was going to say something that I shouldn't say, but well, you're welcome be, a, be, to say be a good bugger. I was going to yeah. use another word. Don't be a, <laughs> don't be a dick, but you yeah. know, it's uh, you know, be who you are and be honest. You know, honesty goes such a long way, and and that's you'll meet people along the way who probably need to <laughs> listen to that. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, one thing when someone's throughout my journey, if someone's done something that I didn't like. I've probably just taken that aside and, and thought to myself, I'm not going to be like that. When I, if I, when I succeed down the track, I'm going to be able to hold my head high. And that's, that's something that, um, that, that I'm really, really confident in saying mm. I'll, I'll do. You know? and, and so honesty is a huge, huge important thing for, for myself and my family and, and people around me because it, yeah, don't be that dick. Mm. <laughs> 
Uh, again, it's I love that because every person that I talk to is an outlier. They are observing everyone else, yeah. and they're literally. Does that work for me? Does it not? If it doesn't, I don't want to be like that. And if it does, I'm going to add it to my um, skill set or you know, or my network where I can reach out to those people. Yeah, definitely. So it's almost a fact-finding mission the whole time, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 it is. It is definitely a fact-finding mission. Well, speaking of fact-finding missions, I think that weather's clearing. Yeah, that's with, looking... Uh, got a nice little bus there. <laughs> yeah. Should we go for a bit of a tour? Yeah, we will. We'll go, go for a bit of a burn round and um, get up there in the... I think the hills feel that way are looking a little bit better and go and see some snow and a few other beautiful things around the place and go and enjoy the day. Well, Rob, thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. You're officially an outlier, my friend. Awesome. Well done. <laughs> Good man. Perfect. Well, there it is, guys. I hope you enjoyed this inspiring outlier episode with Rob Hunt. For more videos, resources and information, visit outlier.tv or connect with us on our social media pages below. I'm Andrew McComb, and here's to living the outlier life outside of the comfort zone. I'll see you soon.